I'm Dr. Pat Davidson, I'm here with Barbend, and I'm going to be bringing Jake through one of my favorite exercises here, and it's the one that I really start a lot of people off with whenever I'm doing any kind of a single leg exercise or a split squat variation, and that's going to be a front foot elevated Zercher split squat. I think this drill puts people in the best possible position for them to be really successful for doing this exercise right. We're gonna start off by talking about the setup for this Zercher split squat. And if we get the person set up appropriately, the exercise will probably take care of itself and they'll do it properly. If the setup's off, you basically have no shot of really having success with this. So we're gonna have Jake just get into a basic position of a split squat here. So he's got the front foot forward, he's on his toes on the back foot. And to be able to really get into this exercise properly, we have to perform a movement that's called a hip shift. So I'm gonna have Jake perform this hip shift by bringing his right pelvis forward as the left side of his pelvis goes back, okay? Now, whenever you do this movement properly, the thigh stays lined up over the foot. When people do this movement improperly, they try to create this hip shift and the knee just travels laterally outside of the foot. If you experience the knee traveling laterally, what you really need to do is plant your weight through the inside edge of the foot and make sure you've got your big toe firmly pressed down. If you do that, you'll probably experience an intense recruitment of the inner thigh when you get into that hip shift. So he's got it, he can feel that. I always check to see with people, hey, do you feel that inner thigh on? If they don't, they're really not in the position. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that his body is nicely lined up. I wanna see that the middle of his skull is right over the bottom of his pelvic floor. I want him like a canister when I'm looking at him from the side. Oftentimes by getting the arms out in front of the body, it helps people keep their weight back. A lot of times when I'm coaching people, I tell them I'm not looking for them to be a ski jumper. You know, and what do ski jumpers do with their arms? When they go off of the thing, their arms go back. And when arms go back, it shoots the thorax and the head forward, which is great if you're launching yourself off of one of those ski jumps, but not the best case scenario if we're trying to keep you lined up in terms of head over the body, over the pelvis. So Jake's in a great position here in terms of his setup. But the common mistakes you'll see is that the head will be out in front of the pelvis or that the knee will turn laterally outside of the foot. Now that we've established the proper setup for this Zercher split squat, we're going to go through actually going through the proper motion for it. And with this, what I'm looking for is encouraging the knee to go as far forward over the toes as possible. So now that we've got Jake in a great starting position where he's created his hip shift, he's got his body lined up properly, I'm gonna have him descend down into the split squat by really focusing on that knee going forward. As his, now he's reached this maximum bottom position, his hips have come forward and I want him to move straight vertical like he's in an elevator to be able to come up out of this. You'll never get to full lockout. If you do, you're just simply moving too far backwards. I want you to think less escalator and more elevator for this movement. His body is just traveling straight up and down. The only way it can do that is if that knee goes forward once the knee goes forward, I need his pelvis and hips to stay here as he goes straight up and down. Some of the big mistakes that people make with this is that as they're trying to come up, they just simply shoot their hips back and their body tips forward. We're gonna try to keep you as much in a stacked position as we possibly can. And Jake is probably feeling a whole lot of hamstring, quad, and inner thigh as he does this exercise with nothing but body weight. So Jake's done a great job of being able to show the really good technique for this exercise. So show him what he's won, loading. All right, so he's in this great Zercher position here. The bar being in the crooks of the elbow basically creates the right position of the arms so that we aren't ski jumping and shooting a head forward. All I'm gonna have you do here, without necessarily trying to lift the bar, reach your elbows a little forward, right there. You get a little bit more abs when you do that. Sweet spot for getting abs involved. You're in it, we're gonna hip shift a little bit. Now we're gonna make the knee go forward, staying on the big toe side of the foot. Own the position of the hip, staying forward. Elevator rather than escalator. And it's just straight pump city for quads, hamstrings, adductors, and glutes. Very surprising exercise in terms of how muscular and difficult this is. 
Don't go out there and try to load 225 on the bar and do that for your first time out there. Trust me, you'll regret it later. So three really common mistakes with that Zercher split squat. Number one is an overall concept. What I'm trying to do for the most part is I'm trying to make your squats squattier. People oftentimes just deadlift all of their lower body exercises. So I'm trying to get people to not deadlift their squats and deadlift their deadlifts. So I'm looking for squatty squats. And to be able to do that, what I'm trying to do is to get those knees to go over the toes as far as we possibly can and to prevent the hips from shooting back and up as they commonly would in a deadlift. So we'll just kind of show this real quick again. Like if we're getting into this position and we have a thorax that's tilted forward, we are now kind of deadlifting our squat and we're going to be redundant in terms of what we're developing here. So we're gonna get as vertical as we can through the thorax and we're gonna maintain that verticality. And the only way to do that is to make that front knee go forward, okay? One of the things that I see as a big mistake here is that people do not have their knee staying over their toes, they go outside their toes. So we want over the toes in terms of forward and over the toes in terms of not being lateral or medially falling away from the foot. So if you can do those things at the level of the leg, I think you're pretty good. And if we just turn you perpendicular to the direction you're facing just overall, we'll be able to see that one of the big things you wanna do is as you get to the bottom of this motion, you don't want your hips to pop up and back. Like that, that's always gonna send people in the wrong direction. We want the hips to stay forward as he keeps them under his body and he controls that through the top of the motion. The benefits of the Zercher front foot elevated split squat are numerous. I put this exercise into this category of found gold, and that's a very rarefied air of an exercise category in my mind. So what do I mean by found gold? Number one, this is a drill that oftentimes from a rehab or prehab perspective is going to make your hips feel incredible after. Okay, sometimes I'll get people to come into this drill and they've got some nagging aches and pains. Maybe it's a knee, maybe it's a back. Get them into this position, have them effectively own their pelvis and thorax while they're moving through the ankle and knee. And before you know it, they feel a hell of a lot better after the fact. So that's a great thing. When I measure range of motion with people on a table and I take a look at things like uh, the, the femur being able to flex and extend and abduct and adduct and rotate, I oftentimes see dramatic improvements in range of motion through the leg as a result of performing this activity. So we're already got two really big pieces of feeling better and moving with more range of motion after the fact. But the third one that I think really puts this one into elite rarefied air is the fact that this is a tremendous fitness impacting exercise. You're going to be able to gain muscle mass, gain strength, own the position of your body to a tremendous degree, and it's going to challenge you from a cardiovascular and metabolic perspective at the same time. This thing literally hits every possible bird it can with one stone, and that is a great thing from my perspective because it saves me the time of having to go through elaborate mobility drills, it saves me the time of having to do sending people off to physical therapists, and at the same time, I'm driving fitness. So where does this Zercher front foot elevated split squat fit into a program for people? And I think it's always fair to think of this from the perspective of, well, what about a beginner? What about an intermediate level person? And how about an advanced person? From the perspective of a beginner, oftentimes where I feel it fits in is from the perspective of learning. There's always a difference between learning and teaching and training. You know, once we get to the point of training, you're not thinking about this. You're simply loading this activity. You're trying to do more sets, more reps, more weight and be able to drive the fitness further and further and further. Whereas for a beginner, oftentimes you're just trying to get them to perform it properly. So for beginners, chances are you're not going to be using substantial amounts of load here. What you might find is a useful way to load this is a very light barbell or maybe a sandbag is an implement that I've found to be really effective for fitting into the arms in that zercher position. It's not painful. You don't want clients coming in on day one, leaving, leaving with huge bruises on their arms or having that be a painful spot later. So make sure that the person is doing it properly, number one. That's the most important thing to do for a beginner. So where could it fit in in the overall design for them? You know, I categorize exercise and from, a, from loaded exercise perspectives, I have knee dominant exercises, hip dominant exercises, horizontal pushing, horizontal pulling, vertical pushing, vertical pulling, 
and then there's triple extension. But those previous seven are the big ones in terms of general population clientele. And when it comes to a knee dominant exercise, I am not someone that's in love or married to a barbell back squat performed from a powerlifting or weightlifting style uh, of, of demonstration. Anything that falls under the category of knee dominant is open game for me to put into somebody's program that's not a competitive lifter. And I oftentimes find myself going with a split squat for a lot of people because it's going to limit load. It potentially can save them from the skeleton just being kind of crushed by excessive amounts of heavy loading while still maximizing muscular recruitment. So for beginners, it's light, it's technique oriented. For people that are intermediate to advanced, I would say now we have to start looking at this as it's probably going to become more and more of an accessory piece because most of the people that I know that are intermediate and advanced typically have performance in the weight room oriented goals, whether they be power lifters or Olympic lifters or CrossFitters or whoever, but oftentimes these people are more oriented towards seeing how much load they can move through some kind of a barbell or front or back squat type of procedure with a two foot uh, exercise. So for those individuals, I think that this is one of the best accessory drills that you can possibly do. I oftentimes don't prescribe these things as just warm up for people because I know for me, when I just put it in as warm up, I tend not to be as diligent as I should about actually doing the appropriate number of sets and reps. So I usually will put it in after the main lower body strength exercise with a couple of other drills that fit into that. But I always make sure that I create a situation where I'm doing it for a certain number of sets and reps and I'm progressing it over time. Otherwise for me, I know I just won't actually do it and I kind of sweep it under the rug and it doesn't become as important for me. All right, so saying goodbye to everybody. It's really been a pleasure uh, coming to you here from barbend.com in this beautiful Brooklyn, New York location. Uh, I'd just like to let everybody know that for more information from my material, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Dr. Pat Davidson. It's going to be linked to this video and everything associated with it. I've got a continuing education page that you can find through my Instagram bio link. It's a Patreon account. We film hour long education sessions at Hype Gym in Union Square in Manhattan. You can also look for some upcoming seminars that I'm teaching for the Rethinking the Big Pattern seminar, which is where I try to put my entire model together and really demonstrate the right way to do all kinds of different drills, put them together into program design, and give you all the secrets behind the scene that I do in my day-to-day -day job.